Good morning. This is a video which I um, try to focus on the city assessor office, uh, namely what if the city assessor office uh, wants to appoint a person within the office who maintains data, uh, barangay boundaries, uh, zone data, lot data, uh, polygons of course, only anonymous data we use in OpenStreetMap. Um, I want to maintain this so all the offices in Baguio City and everyone who is of interest gets this data automatically updated and can use it without the need of sending emails or people running between offices with USB sticks etc. It's always updated and uh, this person of course needs to figure out if someone else has been altering the data. The city needs control over the data, right? You need to verify it. For this we have quality assurance tools and um, this is OSM cha what you see here this is a beautiful surface um, it's made for OpenStreetMap and it helps us to identify any changes on the map um, in this case the bounding box is set for Baguio which means any change anywhere which causes a bounding box that also includes Baguio we would see this here in this case you get from a new mapper he, he made a mistake which does not involve Baguio but I want to uh, discuss this very briefly he edited something in Bhutan he edited something here in Melbourne because Bhutan and Melbourne creates a bounding box which then encompasses the whole area here uh, half of the Indian Ocean the Philippine Sea etc this bounding box is so huge Baguio is within, so we get a warning about his edits, but we should ignore this because he didn't edit anything in Baguio, so you can just ignore that. And um, if you want to specifically look for Baguio itself, and then specifically the assessor office, there's a few ways how you can do that. First of all, I'm going to show you here. Um, data which I edited from the Baguio City assessor office, I actually use as source Baguio City assessor office. That is a very specific source then, and I can easily search for that. Um, also the check date I add, what is the date I actually first added this information uh, to the um, database. And with these two, plus the fact I can also look up the ID of editors, the identification number of editors, or the identification name of editors, it gives me the three basic tools to actually identify data and this is what I'm going to show you in OSM Cha. Um, I save the filter here and look what's going to happen on the left side if I click on the filter. It now filters out everything that does not involve data from the Baguio City Assessor Office. So here you basically see all my edits over the past days. Um, as you can read from my comments where I added all the barangay boundaries. And um, yeah, you get flags like possible imports, added in place, possible import. Yeah, it's not a possible, I imported it. So <laughs> it's actually funny. But um, of interest here is actually um, if data has altered by a stranger, of course. So in this case, you instantly see, if you're at the city assessor office and you're the one who maintains it, you instantly see, no one touched our data. So I'm good with it, that's it. At this point, I could skip the video, and you could skip as well, because no one changed any data of the city assessor office, other than the person who is maintaining it, which is me right now. Um, but let's assume this would not have been me. This is not Heigen Mac, which is uh, my uh, nickname. This is someone else. Let's assume that. You can see two nodes have been deleted. Uh, or not two nodes, two ge deletions generally have happened. So you click on this. Let's see what that person did. Obviously, I know what it did, but here you see actually the bounding boxes in yellow from all the changes that happened and um, the overall bounding box which covers in all the changes and here on the plus we actually see what, what happened um, here you see modified relations here you see what has been deleted here you see what has been created so let's on delete it we want to see what has been deleted by the user um, he deleted away 
So you select that way, and here we actually see the tag details. So what has been deleted, it's nothing of the Baguio City Assessor Office. We don't see the tag here. There's no tag detail describing Baguio City Assessor Office. So this is a road that has been deleted. And um, then we check the next one, the note. Oh, the note actually says Baguio City Assessor Office has been deleted. Uh, this we wouldn't like, of course, that a stranger would delete a note here. But we can quickly assess that actually the note is still there. And we can do that. The editor who would maintain this for the city assessor office, he can quickly load here the data layer. And uh, for reference, I just used the uh, internal uh, KML data you would use a backup file. So if you do a daily backup of, of the data, you can automate that. You can just load up a daily backup or a backup from a month ago in two layers and then you do this. And if you click fast and you switch here between the layers, you quickly see the node is still at the same location. So everything is good. So what happened, that's very easy to explain. When I added this information initially, uh, let's fire up the uh, satellite imagery. When I did this initially, this road here was mapped coincidentally, it's really a coincidence, it was mapped exactly on the location here with the date of the Baguio City Assessor Office. So this road was really here. And um, what happened is that when I added to this information, when I merged the information from the Baguio City Assessor Office, the node there merged with the existing node of the road. And this is a problem. I discovered this is a problem. Why is that a problem? Because another mapper might not really want to touch the information of the Baku City Assessor Office, neither do I want to touch that information. But sometimes you've got to touch the road. Uh, changes happen, uh, road works happen, so you occasionally update that, maybe years from now. But if, if that is then using the same node, you get the problem that if you touch the road, you automatically also touch the data of the barangay boundaries which we don't want to. So what I did here is I separated a little bit so it's very visible for anyone working on this. If you want to work on the road, there's the road and next to it is the boundary. So I did not touch the boundary. I actually separated the node for the street, moved it a bit and um, now you have then two nodes. But what happened is that when I separated the nodes and moved it, this node remained at the same place of the official node from the Baguio City Assessor Office. And this node, which I moved, is then a different location. But actually, this node was from the Baguio City Assessor Office, and this node was from the road. Now actually it doesn't matter because it's just two points. So one point is in here, one point is there. This one is at the right way, uh, the right location for the Baguio City Assessor Office. This one not, but this one is actually the node which holds the key data, the source and check date I add for all the nodes for the Baguio City Assessor Office barangay boundaries. So then I removed it from this node and moved it to that node because I know this node is still at the right location and this node is at the wrong location. And then in OSM chart you get this warning that someone moved this node and then deleted this, um, these tags from the node. And so basically nothing went wrong. I did everything correct. It's just 
two nodes were on top of each other, I moved one, which was coincidentally the wrong node. What I should have done actually, so next time I do this, now I see in, the, in my own edits in the quality assurance tools, I see what I should have done. What I should have done is when I saw I moved the wrong node and this was still at the right location, I should not have cut the tags here move those tags there and the tags from here cut them out and move them there what i should have done leave the tags in place move back this node and then cut the node from the road and move the road node then there wouldn't have been a warning in osmcha osmcha would not have warned me that someone has edited the Bagia city assessor office uh, boundary data but now it was edited, although the date itself didn't actually change. I just swapped the, the tags because I split the two nodes and then you get a flag, someone changed the data. So indeed for the quality assurance tool, the data has changed because the data from this node moved to that node and the data from that node moved to that node. But after moving the tags, the data here for that node, which is still in the right location, it's still the right data and it's still the right location. And this is also for myself helpful to improve my own skills for mapping. Now I know if this happens, if you split two nodes like this and um, you see you've got the wrong node, don't think that, oh, I just quit the, the keys then, that's a short solution. It's better than to say, oh, wait, 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 then revert this movement, select the other node and move that one. Then this won't happen. So the data is still okay. It's still the original data. It's um, still at the right location. Nothing wrong happened. And this is the beauty with quality assurance tools. Um, as, we, as I figure out myself now, it even helps myself how to improve my own mapping skills and to avoid that in the future. But this is the only edit that happened happened and these quality assurance tools they they would help also that the city uh, the buggy city assessor office if they choose to appoint someone who maintains this for them um, to keep track of any changes you can analyze those changes you can uh, fire up a backup from a month ago which i'll show you here um, you can load that simply here as a next layer and then you can simply swap the layers and you see if it's okay um, but you can also do this here. So if you zoom in very, very, very close, if you enable it, you see the dark line from the layer below. So you can really verify that it's still at the right location. You didn't do anything wrong. You just did it a bit uh, awkward how you moved uh, split two nodes. So this is then the end of this video about quality assurance tools, how you can figure out who edited anything in uh, Bagio. You get a whole list of changes. Uh, you can verify uh, what did that person do, or maybe the, it's a false flag, because that happens as I've shown you. Um, you can search specifically for edits which are of relevance for a specific office. You can search for specific keys which you use within the office to make sure this is the data for us as office working for the city of Baguio and we want to uh, keep track of that once a week or once a month we want the person who maintains that to check on it if there's been any edits and what edits have there been made and um, in case there have been edits made how in JOSM we could load a backup put it as a different layer and then we can compare we can see that that person actually move a boundary or is it just as happened to me that I selected the wrong nodes and then instead of putting the nodes back and move the right node instead of doing that I just flipped the tags I just copy pasted the tags over and um, then you know everything is okay, you can verify that. Uh, this won't happen often that someone touches it. I'm now in the process of separating all the administrative boundaries. So it's going to be a different layer. Wherever it happened to me, like in this 
specific point it didn't happen to me often but there are a few more points I know of where actually two nodes came together when I was adding this data so I will go over the data I will split that so these boundaries are completely separated from any other data on the database and um, then it's really easy because obviously no one is going to touch it then and um, I'm going to extend this video I could sh shut it down now after quarter of an hour after 50 minutes but I'm going to add one more thing why it's good that you actually get information from mappers and why mappers actually legitimately might add information to the data from the Baku city um, let's go to MRR Queen of Peace and Kayan Estanch this area yeah so this is Kayan extension and this is MRR Queen of Peace and do, 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 let's invert that uh, this we flag away Uh, oh no, that's the wrong filter. I want this one. Yeah. So now you see here, oh, let's also switch off the big aerial, then we get a clearer view. So this is the official boundary. Uh, this is the official boundary. This is Queen of MR, Queen of Peace. This is Kayang Extension. And. Um, the official name according to the barangay is MRR Queen of Peace. The data at the assessor office is just Queen of Peace without the MRR. So what we do here, you can see that on the right side, I used here the Baguio City assessor office as source. I did not use the barangay as source. Because I used the city assessor office as source, I then also have as name the name which the Baguio City Assessor Offices use. So within that data it's just Queen of Peace and not MRR Queen of Peace. But because the Barangay actually writes MRR Queen of Peace, I have that as an alternative name. Now if my source were to be the Barangay, I would put MRR Queen of Peace as name and then as an alternative name I would write Queen of Peace because I know other offices use that name as well without the MRR. So it really depends on the source what you're going to do. But uh, what I want to focus on is this area here. Um, these quality assurance tools, if someone changes the boundary here and says, well, I've been surveying here and I noticed the signs on their houses here actually say Queen of Peace but the boundary which is now an open street map here from the city assessor office claims this is Kayang extension then that mapper might decide to actually change the boundary move it to encompass these houses here these buildings within Queen of Peace and that is then, if that happens, that is when you would see an edit here in OSMCHA. In OSMCHA, it would report you here, hey, someone deleted or created or modified that boundary. And then you can check on that boundary. Uh, you can load it up in JOSM or you just load it up here on uh, OpenStreetMap on the internet. It doesn't matter really, it's your personal preference what you like to review data. But then you can check on that and um, this is really the beauty of uh, OpenStreetMap. Suddenly you think, hey, a member changed something. Now don't immediately think he is a vandal or he did it wrong. Actually, he did it right. What is wrong, what is a problem, is the fact that the Baguio City Assessor Office as boundary data but the physical reality on the ground says that some buildings within a certain boundary do not belong to that barangay but actually to the neighboring barangay that is the problem 
So it's not the problem that the mapper reports this and changes the boundary. The problem is why does this happen in the first place? What is the cause of this? That is the problem. And this is the beauty of OpenStreetMap. You then see here this change. You can click here on the user icon here. Um, you can click on OSM for this user, which in this case is me. And um, well, in this case, I cannot write myself a message, obviously. Um, let's go to the other user here who made this weird change from Melbourne to Bhutan. If you see this other user change something, you can actually click on that user. You can open his profile here and you can send him a message. And in the message here, you can actually type um, change set. Then you look here, what is the change set? Um, oh, that is the change set. Where is the number? Yeah, I actually find it hard. Oh, we can open the number like this. Open in a new link. So you can open this change set here. Change set. Boundary, boundary changes that's on your subject to that user and then you say uh, good morning dear mapper we've noticed you have changed the barangay boundary in this change set can we ask you for the reason of this change. Is it an error or is the physical reality on the ground different from the official boundary data we've imported to OpenStreetMap? Can you reveal your source for the um, for the change as well. Kind regards, the city of Bavia. Uh, I'm not going to send this because this person did not uh, do anything in Bavia. It's just an example. But in this case, you send it to the user. The user gets a message and he can respond. Um, and then you get the feedback, so this user will then tell you, well, for example, in, in the case of this MRR Queen of Peace uh, VS uh, Kayang extension, where I noticed that, uh, the user will report to you and say, uh, well, I walked around the area, I've been in Baguio for a tourist, or I live in Baguio, I'm a constituent, and I noticed that the signs on the houses actually claim it's a different barangay, so that's why I changed the boundary. And uh, at that point, you at the city know there's a problem. You have the official boundary known to the Bagu City Assessor Office, and then the barangay among among each other between that they did something different. So it helps you to identify this problem, and then you can start a discussion with the, both of the barangays and with the corresponding Purok leaders. Why did this happen? And then you can either decide these uh, houses should be addressed to the other barangay, they should flip over to Kayang extension, or you find the agreement that the official boundary data on the city of uh, Baguio will be um, changed, and you reflect the stand on OpenStreetMap, so all the offices in the whole of the city instantly know about the change. Uh, you can also correspond them back to that map and say, uh, um, we are going to restore the original boundaries, and your additional data about the physical reality that is uh, different for the time being while we're in discussion with the relevant uh, parties for the time being we add your uh, change to the map as a additional uh, temporary barangay boundary and that's basically what I did here as you can see here I added this as a 
separate the boundary. So actually let's do it like this. Here you can see there's the Queen of Peace, which is that one, that's the official boundary. That's the official boundary. And this is then the disputed area. So you can do it like this also from the city assessor office. So you can then communicate with that mapper and say, we will restore the official uh, data. Uh, then we add the um, temporary data we got from you as a temporarily uh, barangay boundary, as an additional super barangay, or however you want to describe it. And you can keep it like that so it doesn't get forgotten. And also other mappers, when they come in this area, they say, ah, okay. And um, then you start the discussion to fix the problem with the barangays or with the Purocs. Once everyone agrees, once you've got consensus on it, then you adapt the map according to the consensus what then the new boundary is or maybe you just maintain the boundaries and the houses which are located there they are being told well take down your your house number plates which indicate the wrong barangay and put the plates there with the right barangay so this is the beauty of open street map um, yeah you get this feedback from from the community and if if the mayor or the public information office on Facebook if they would promote open street map to the constituents then you get that the offices they can maintain the official data while at the same time you get feedback from the community from people who say hey but look here it's a bit different and while at the same time you have the tools with Ozamcha but um, as I can show you here there's really a lot of tools for quality assurance on OpenStreetMap, which, which really help you to keep track on the official data you have and um, keep track if people from the community or constituents or tourists, if they report something. And uh, yeah, at this point I'm going to conclude this video. And um, I want to finish here with the point, make backups. You can make a daily backup so if you then at OSM just see something has changed, you fire up the backup in the layer, you look at the actual data in the layer, then these layers over each other, you can compare them. You see what has been changed, if any. Um, yeah, this feedback obviously helps you to identify problems within the city. Um, but don't expect too many changes. The majority of the people, they wouldn't know how this works. They wouldn't know how to edit data on the internet. And they wouldn't know how to work with databases, etc. Those that do, they learn quickly. They might make mistakes in the beginning, like this one mapper who mapped that in uh, Melbourne something, and then in Bhutan, and then uploaded it in the same batch. We comment on that, we contact them, we report to them. That's also what the uh, Bangu City uh, officers should do. Communicate with the public then. And you will find out over time that you will get a group of, of hardcore mappers who are experienced, who know what they are doing, and they will help you to keep the city up to date on the internet. It's, uh, it's a rewarding investment. Um, governments in Europe are doing that, cities in Europe are doing that, also in the US they started doing this, in Japan, Australia, etc. And it's a valuable resource to uh, straighten things out, to identify problems. Um, all the tools are there to make sure that you have data integrity, that you identify problems, that you can see what changes have been made. Um, yeah, we're now at half an hour video, so I'm going to stop this. So the first 50 minutes I explained the basics. The last 50 minutes we focus on a specific uh, identification of, an, uh, of a problem. I think that's it for today. And um, if there's any more questions, well, you know how to contact me. So then I wish you uh, good luck with this video and the information you got from this video.